Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am DID Choi, and today we're going to be doing more stress testing of the 2021 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max, 64 gigs of RAM. So, I want to quickly start off by saying that the previous video that I uploaded, the contact stress test, we saw that the CPU was maxing out quite a bit before the fans even kicked in or the RAM was swapping and struggling. Thank you so much to those of you in the community, especially to David Cadell for suggesting that I mess with the contact buffer settings. That's one thing that I forgot to adjust and even look at because I set it a few years ago to optimize to my previous computer with 16 gigs of RAM where I had a fast SSD, so I was streaming more from the SSD than loading into RAM. Previously, I had it set to, I think it was 15 kilobytes or something. It was very low. Now I set it to 60 and let's see if that makes a difference at all. If I get more tracks, less tracks, the same amount of tracks, Let's take a look. All right, so now I have the session loaded up. I believe I saved the session at the point where we were at last time. So let's bring up the CPU meter again. I'm gonna go and make sure the RAM is purged as well. Using terminal command, sudo purge. Let's check our RAM settings. So Logic currently has about 56 gigabytes worth of virtual instruments loaded up. Basically everything else is off again. CPU wise without anything playing, Logic's at 25% CPU while screen capture is also around the same amount. Let's see first of all if this plays. It'll take a moment to load up, we have the rainbow of death. Okay, we have a system overload. so it's our third try after two system overloads and it's playing the looping is working last time if you recall from the other video this was basically not playing at all i did change one of the settings from automatic processing threads to 10 which added two more threads in the performance meter here apparently with automatic it's only using the high efficiency cores okay i'm gonna go ahead and turn on high power mode again just to make sure we're getting the most performance we can we are still in Logic Rosetta because Contact is not officially supported in the native mode. Eventually, once it does get supported in the native mode with the Apple Silicon architecture, Contact could become a lot more efficient. Hopefully one day we're gonna be able to run a lot more tracks. This is only the beginning and basically it's supposed to only get better from here. So it is all exciting. still system overloading. So while it does look like adjusting the contact setting in the buffer back to 60 kilobytes did definitely help, it doesn't make too much of a difference. Let me try just as an experiment now that we're all here, moving this up to say 120. I'm curious if that'll make any difference. System overload on the third pass. Okay, but it did seem a little lighter on the meter. Let's check the RAM. RAM, we are at 56. There's no swap being used, but the memory pressure is above 50%. So I think it does make a bit of a difference. Let's go in and add in some more stuff. I'm gonna bring in the Spitfire percussion. So that added in another six tracks. So we're now at 94 tracks. <laughs> So it is playing, just not super consistently. Add in some more. System overload. System overload. Yeah, so while changing that contact buffer size did help a little bit, it turns out it's not actually like a huge difference. It's kind of like a marginal improvement. So I think the big thing here is definitely the Rosetta translation environment and partially the screen recording. So yeah, I think I'll definitely keep my buffer setting around the 60 default setting. And it certainly is better than the whatever low amount that I had before. It's using a little bit more of the RAM, but again, it's not stressing the RAM at all. So the biggest culprit definitely has to be Rosetta. So once all the companies please update to support Apple Silicon natively, we will definitely see a huge performance boost. Yeah, so with the buffer setting increased in contact, we are getting better performance with this individual articulation test. I have loaded up to the Flute 2s, and they're all loaded this time. None of them are actually disabled, and it runs fine. I'm 
maybe I spoke too soon. It is still peaking, but the average level seems to be lower than before. Yeah, so it does make it across. I probably could do a lot more. Went ahead and added 10 more oboe tracks and it actually played better. Huh, interesting. Okay, let's add the rest of the oboe one tracks. Okay, so now I loaded in all the oboe one. It's still working. Loaded in all the clarinet ones. Two hundred fifty-six individual articulation instances of contact with the preload buffer back at sixty. Wow, it played flawlessly. It had system overloads earlier. I guess it just needed more time to load things in. Fifty-eight gigs of RAM. I did purge before opening this session. Logic is using forty-eight of those fifty-eight gigs. CPU. Yeah, the spikes are all under control. I expected this test to be very quick thinking that it wouldn't be a huge difference with the preload buffer size. Like I knew it would be different, but I didn't think it would be this different. And the articulation set test that we did earlier was not that different. It was kind of similar. I only was able to add like a couple tracks and there was a minor jump in performance with articulation sets. But so far with individual articulations, it seems that there is a huge difference in performance when I have the preload buffer setting of contact increased to 60. Bassoons down two octaves from what everyone else was playing. Bassoons now. Okay, finally we had a system overload. Let's see if that was just a loading issue or if it'll keep going like that. Okay, yeah, we do have peaking. You see there, we're basically approaching the edge of where all the cores are starting to overload. Starting out around 50 to 75, and then, yeah, the last few cores are jumping. Yeah, just playing the last three notes, which are really two different notes. It's handled fine. Now with more time, it's playing everything fine as well. Let's try it another time. Yeah. Okay, so I would say this is not handling it. It's doable, but it's not ideal. You would be freezing tracks at this point. Logic's using 53 gigs of RAM. We still have no swap. The memory used overall is 60 gigs with the screen recording and all the background tasks. And we are at 269 tracks now. That's a huge update from last time. Thank you again, David, for suggesting that I increase the preload buffer. It did make a difference, like a whole 50 more tracks or so. Awesome. In the next test, we're gonna be looking at the benchmark stress test as a spoiler, because I did that test before this one. When you switch between Rosetta mode and Apple Silicon mode, there is a fairly significant difference. All right, so next up we have another suggestion from the viewers. Raphael suggested that I try the standard logic benchmark test. And while at first I thought, you know, many other people probably ran this test, I thought, you know, why not also run it so you get an idea of how the CPU fares. Again, we have the same setting, same buffer size. So this stress test is basically just logic sculpture plugin with the channel EQ, multipressor, chorus, auto filter, and platinum verb. So this gives a better idea of the CPU performance where we have multiple synths, which are CPU heavy, and multiple effects, which are CPU heavy. Now let's see how many tracks it can take. All right, so here we have the benchmark test. By default, there's 50 tracks loaded in already. There's no automation on these tracks. It's just uh, the straight up thing. Four note chord voicings playing this Austin out of repeating figure and it's looped. So yeah, let's take a look at how the first 50 tracks sound. Okay, seems to be performing okay. It is quite heavy on the CPU though, around 50% for these first 50 tracks. All right, let's try 75 tracks now.
So we're already kind of hovering around the 100% point in a lot of these cores. I think it'll barely take more. So let's try 100 tracks and see how that fares. We have a system overload. Let's try again. Another system overload. One more try. Another system overload. Now, I wonder how much the screen recording is affecting this. The fans, again, are not going off. We saw logic around 300% just now. We are still in Rosetta mode. I'm assuming once we run this in the native mode, it'll be a lot better. Screen capture is using 20% and kernel task is always annoying. We never really know what it is, but it's always there. Uh, it is also using a good 20%. Since this was overloading, I'm gonna try quitting Logic and I'm gonna reopen it in the native Apple Silicon mode rather than Rosetta. And let's see if there's any significant improvement there. Okay, right off the bat, I'm gonna start with 75 tracks again. See if that works. Bring the CPU up again. System overload. So it looks like at the start where you're just loading everything in and you don't give enough time for logic to process everything, there is a system overload. But once you're starting to play it again, it's totally fine. Now that we're in the native mode, it does seem to be a lot more efficient. But while we were hovering around the 100% CPU mark, now we're hovering more around the 75%. Let's go to 100. When it was in Rosetta mode, it couldn't take 100 at all. I'm assuming now as I play it, it's gonna system overload once. And then when we play it again, let's see if it works. Let's try again. Yeah, we can have it playing no problem. It's hovering around 85, 90% now. Let's load in more. 125, gonna play it. System overload. Okay, play it again. So now we're kind of hovering around the same place we were at with 100 tracks back in Rosetta mode. Right now we have 25 more tracks than we did before in Rosetta mode. Okay, I'm gonna go to 150, but I have a feeling this might not work. Two system overloads. Yes, yeah, another one at the same place, one more. Despite all my settings being optimized for optimal performance, it still seems to be struggling with 150 tracks. I'm going to turn off the screen recording and carry on. You guys can look at the screen through my iPhone now as I will film my monitor. Yeah, let's try again without the screen recording. Okay, I'm gonna play it again at 150 tracks. Let's see if getting rid of the screen recording helps at all. We still have a system overload. Okay, so it looks like it's not that much of a difference with the screen recording on and off. Maybe it needs more time to unload it, although in the activity monitor, it seems to be gone. Yeah, and QuickTime itself is also quitted. So it should be fine, but we are getting system overloads at 150 tracks. I feel like I've seen other people doing the test have more success, like having more like 200 something tracks. Around 150 tracks is too much. I'm going to try going down to 140. Nope. I'm going to go down to 135. Nope. So 135 seems to have a little bit more success. It, it went longer. It does system overload ultimately. Okay, now we're at 130 tracks. Or actually it's 129 tracks, but yeah. So you can see that the CPU is being maxed out pretty hard in most of the cores, but there is still a little bit of headroom and it's playing fine. Yeah, so with this stress test, I'm looking at around 129 tracks with sculpture and a whole bunch of audio effects. 
these are my results running off an external drive with the external 4K display. I have a MIDI controller connected. Yeah, this is my setup and my results. Hopefully I can learn to optimize things a lot more moving forward into the future. It's still very good, like no one's really going to be using 129 instances of the same synth with 5 different effects on it. If you're doing a lot of effect heavy stuff, usually the track count is more at like 40 to 80 range or something like that. And it's all different stuff, half of it might be MIDI, half of it might be audio, so that is that. Alright, so I know I did say I was going to do a synth stress test. But having done the benchmark test with the instances of Sculpture, I think we got a pretty good idea of how much synths and processing we can do with an M1 Max now. And I don't really necessarily have to load in other synths and try it out. I'm sure it's going to give similar results and every project we do in the real world is going to be very different in terms of what we need, what parts we're stressing, whether it's the RAM or the CPU that's under more stress. And every plugin that we use, everything third party is going to be very different. If I had something like Omnisphere or Serum or one of those more serious synths, then I guess it could have been worth it for me to try another stress test using those. But as it turns out, I never got around to buying those instruments. I mostly stuck with buying a bunch of orchestral stuff and way too much of the orchestral stuff. And now it's almost Black Friday and I want to get more of the orchestral stuff. Please, Berlin series. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't need it. I have enough. I think I might buy a harp library and maybe the full version of Zebra because I've been using Zebra Let quite a bit and that one I do like quite a bit. So I might invest in one synth. Yeah, even if I was going to do another synth stress test, it would mostly just be instances of Alchemy, like ES2, Sculpture, and Zebra Let, Tyrell 6, I believe, from the same manufacturer. That's basically all I have. During these tests, especially with the contact tests, the fans did go up briefly to 1500 again. That was mostly during the moments where I was actually loading in a whole bunch of instruments at once. It started to settle after that back to zero RPM. And again, 1500, inaudible, doesn't matter. I was using high power mode for most of these tests, so yeah, there's a bit of a performance jump there. I was discussing with some of you in the comments as well, but I really wish Apple had released something that had more RAM and more CPU and less of the GPU as an option. You can configure that with the desktops and stuff, but now with their proprietary chips, there's not as much customization. It's not that you can say, oh, I actually want the 16 core CPU and only a eight core GPU, like we might've been able to do with the Intel and AMD eras. Now it's just like Apple gives you a select couple options and most of their stuff is targeted to video editors and 3D people and those kinds of creators. Anyways, I think that's enough babbling for now. Yeah, buffer size and contact makes a change. Thank you, David. Benchmark tests, pretty strong. 150 tracks or whatever it was is a good result. And contact and all those third-party plugin manufacturers finally should update from just sticking with the Intel Rosetta stuff into Apple Silicon. And then we will have heaven, right? Stuff like Premiere and Final Cut and all that stuff, Photoshop, Lightroom, that's all optimized already. Music manufacturers, like, come on! I'm sure you have a huge Apple market. Like, so many people are using Logic and Apple and stuff, so come on, plugin manufacturers. Like, please, pretty please, can you guys hustle a little bit more? Like, you can't always have nice things, but that would be great. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Leave any thoughts you had in the comments. Let me know what you thought about my tests, if there's anything I should improve. I'm also learning with you guys along the way, and that's what I love about being in all these various forums and communities and Facebook groups, and also just answering you guys in the comments. I've been having great discussions, and I'm excited to have more to come. Leave a like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, check out my music and stuff on the channel as well. This has been DID Choi, and I'll see you in the next one.